Hey guys, welcome back to another Krabby Monday video. I want to talk about what happened with one of my crabs. If you saw the thumbnail, you may have an idea, but one of them did die, and it wasn't my fault at all. What happened... I'll insert a few pictures at this point and then kind of just explain what happened. What happened was, as you saw in the last photo, the crab positioned itself where it couldn't get out of its shell. It was molting, and unfortunately it was a female, but it positioned itself where it tried to get out of its shell because it was molting, but it couldn't because it kind of trapped itself in a corner. And someone on PR Aquatics forums mentioned when a crab is in a corner like that, it will try to expand, it will pump body fluids into the shell to try to un unwedge itself basically to try to get it unstuck. And if it's not far enough along in the process, that basically kills the crab anyhow because it suffocates on its own body fluids. So I did have one die and I only have seven left. So what I've decided to do, I was going to get a couple five-way beta breeder, like beta tanks from Deep Ocean or something, Deep Blue. I'll put a link in the description to the product, but I was going to get like a two five sections, put one section as filtration and the other four with the crab in each one. But given I only have seven crabs, I don't see the point in that anymore, really. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to, once I get these toned down and I get the rest of these kind of situated, I'm going to do something similar where I have it, let me show you in this one. Before I dump this one out to kind of bury the crab, I had it like it with sand up to there. So I'm going to have about eh, half an inch to an inch of sand and nothing else. And just like I'm going to do with the 90 gallon for the shrimp, for the shrimp, for the shrimp, I was going to say shrimp rack, shrimp tank, I just, but that's what this is, the shrimp rack or shrimp tanks, but I'm going to put them in here with like a half inch to an inch of sand, I'm going to kind of stack some rocks in the back, have a nice open area in the front, maybe put their, they each have a spiderwood twig in there and I'll put one of those each one of their spiderwood twigs in each one of these and I'll put a I, I'll try to see if I have seven pieces of chola I might and if I do I'll put one a piece of chola in each one and try to stuff it with some moss so it kind of grows through the chola wood, which I think will look really cool, and the crab may nibble on the moss. The panther crab that I used to have way back when, that kind of started me on this whole crab quest, but it was, it's been a couple years since I've kept them. But I had a Marimo moss ball in the tank with them, and it was a 75 gallon with like three panther crabs. Yeah, three panther crabs. I was thinking 305, but it was three panther crabs. And I noticed one of them kind of clipped off part of the Marimo moss ball and ate it. And that was interesting to me because I'm like, wow, I did not know they ate Marimo moss balls, but apparently they enjoy that. At least one I had did. So I'm going to kind of do something similar, except not with Marimo moss balls. I. I do have enough actually, but I kind of don't want to have these crabs eating those because they are very slow growing and I only have eight of them that I know of. I might not even have that, but I really need to start taking better inventory and bookkeeping. But I'm going to basically put the seven crabs in these tanks right here. and. I know these haven't been treated with copper because I bought them new 
and I keep track of that because I keep the labels on them. So all seven of these, the reason why they were shrimp racks is because they were in fact new and I knew they didn't have pop -up. Now the kind of issue becomes that I'm concerned with, which is the only reason why I would not do this by the way, besides the fact that I kind of want an even sets ratio and part of the thing with crabs that's largely unknown from what I've looked into it and everything is what determines the sets? Is it genetic? Is it environmental? Is it how many males and females are already in the area that they're in secreting hormones and everything that only males or only females secrete? Like what determines the crab sets? And that's really what I want to, one of the many things I want to figure out with these crabs and every crab I keep. But essentially, if it is something with hormones in the water, what will happen if none of these are plumbed together? I have two juvenile crabs that I'm not sure have become like able to tell if they're male or female. And my concern is if I isolate all of them, they may not be able to tell or they may not they may not develop properly or they may just kind of come out like I don't know. Just because I don't know how that works, I'm not sure about that, but I'll try not to speculate too much. But basically, that is one big concern of mine, and the other is when a crab molts, obviously all of these are basically kind of calls at this point. Not really calls, because I'm not, like, I'm still going to breed them in the 90 gallon and right now in the 75 for like the next week. But... They're not going to be sold online. They're just going to be sold on my local fish store. I might eventually get some more that I can sell online. But my biggest concern with this is... If the crabs molt, will... Like, if there's any shrimplets or anything in the water, which we know there's some in the snowball tank, which I put a bunch of the moss and everything in. That was in one of the containers, if you saw yesterday's video that's part of that video but if you if I put the crabs in there and they molted would the shrimps be able to kill them when they're soft shell I actually don't know that and that is one big concern of mine I will be asking that trusted source on PR aquatic spawns and otherwise the main thing I like about keeping them in 10 gallon tanks is one that's the minimum I recommend for any animal that we keep, I mean, at least for beginners, and I'm a novice myself, if you saw the Fishy Friday video, yeah, not my smallest idea, but I do have a couple 2.5s and a couple 5 gallon tanks, but one 5 gallon, one 2.5 is already being used for something, the others are just up here and they do need cleaned out. All of this is going to my compost pile. As long as it's organic or paper, I compost it for the most part. Paper towels, napkins that are used in this fish room and in this business I do compost. But that's my two can well got off track, sorry. That was my two concerns with the male-female ratio and the shrimplets and the any shrimps that may remain in these tanks. The shrimp rack lights just completely shut off, so you'll be seeing this right after that point because I'm cutting everything else out. That happened between, you know, having to walk in here to my mom's kitchen. Excuse me. But the thing I wanted to mention with the those 10 gallons, what I like about them is the five-way tank that's in the descriptions in the, the link is in the description. That tank is fairly small and it I'm kind of thoroughly annoyed. It's good to know 
that when I'm filming and the time will goes off, which I didn't even set one for this section of the yard, we can guesstimate. But it's good to know that a step's recording. I hope you guys didn't have to hear that alone because I'm going to have to cut that out. But, as I was saying before I was oh so rudely interrupted by the alarm that tells me to go switch the sprinklers around in the front yard. I like the 10 gallons because it gives the crabs more room to explore and to basically just live. Because the five-way beta tank that the link is in the the link is in the description. It, if I remember correctly, is 48 inches long, 13 inches wide, and 17 inches tall. And that's divided five ways. That's not very big. I calculated it and it's like six or seven inches like wide. A 10 gallon is 10 inches wide and it gives them about 12 inches long, 10 gallons about 20. So it gives them a lot more room to roam around. It doesn't give them as much volume because the volume, if you were to drill those beta tanks for something like this, that entire system would be one gigantic volume of water versus 10 gallons that's in here. So I think it's like a 30 or 40 gallon tank that they divide five ways for the betas. I think it's actually five gallons per section if I remember correctly. It's amazing just how when I'm annoyed I talk a lot clearer and I tend to remember things, or think I remember things a lot better. Anyways. Yeah. Kind of annoyed tonight, but... YouTube in life, so... I am sorry if this last clip was completely different energy and everything from the previous. But... I just hope you have a better week than I am. Than I'm having of this day right now. Started off great. Not so fond of the ending. <laughs> but I hope your week is great to start off in a strong end. Not like today for me, but you know. I do hope you guys have a great week and stay tuned for the Business Thursday live stream this Thursday. Then there will be a Fishy Friday, Saturday special. Shrimp Sunday and another Crabby Monday next Monday. That's the schedule every week from now on. I'm going to try to edit everything Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday so I can basically prep for the live stream and be done the rest for have the weekend off of YouTube. Not that I won't be replying to your comments or anything because I will, but it would be nice just to have a reprieve of three or four days when videos are up when videos are being published but they've already been scheduled at, in advance. I hope you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to stay tuned of upcoming videos. Like this video if you really like the content and if, <laughs> and if you like me getting annoyed. If you think I'm a lot better when I'm annoyed than when I'm not annoyed, hit that like button and subscribe. If you don't feel that way, well, you saw the energy at the beginning of the video. If you like that energy instead of this energy, hit that like button and subscribe. So, I'm getting off here. It is Sunday at 8.30 p.m. I am fairly tired and probably got to go change the water. Peace and have a great week.